Hey everyone, welcome to another Field Trip Friday. My name's Steve. And I'm Tanika. Where are we today, Tanika? So today we are at the Horton Grove Nature Preserve, which is one of the eight preserves owned by Triangle Land Conservancy and the only public preserve here in Durham County. This is so cool. It is beautiful. I can't wait to learn more. Let's yeah, meet some folks. I am so excited. So let's go. Let's do it. So Daquan, can you tell us who you are and what you do here and where we even are? Yeah, sure. I'm Daquan Edmonds. I'm the Education and Outreach Manager with the Triangle Land Conservancy. Um, and we're at one of our eight public nature preserves, which is Horton Grove Nature Preserve. Um, and it's in Durham County. Awesome. And so what is this? There, it seems like there, there's it's a huge space. I think it you is. said it's over 700 acres or something, right? Yeah, it's, it's 700 acres of protected land. And um, the land we're standing on right now used to be a part of the Cameron um, plantation, which was one of the largest slave plantations um, in in the state of North Carolina, and and you know obviously that comes with a lot of extra history that we have to be sure to take care and learn about, so, and you know we'll talk about that a little later on in today's episode. Excellent. That's awesome. And can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Tell us how you got into being with the Triangle Land Conservancy, and what even makes you want to preserve a trail like that? Makes sense. Yeah. No, that makes. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. Exactly. Yeah, um, I've been with TLC since we call it TLC for short. Um, been with TLC since December, and I guess my background is more in parks and recreation. And um, I began, you know, wanting to learn more about how parks become parks and how you know people can learn to enjoy them. So then my interest started shifting more towards conservation and. Um, prote protecting land for generations to come. So that's how I, I ended up here. So Matt, can, can you tell us who you are and what you do? Uh, sure, I'm um, Matt Rutledge, I'm the Associate Director of Stewardship at Triangle Land Conservancy and uh, work a lot on um, our properties that we've conserved by like Court and Grove and we do things like build trails that uh, allow people out here to access it. We do restoration projects for wildlife. Um, we also, uh, this is our That Makes Sense trail, so we have signage up to kind of give folks an idea and uh, give them some information about the species that you might find out here and things like that. Um, you know, this property is one that uh, really embodies a lot of our four public benefits, which um, we talk about. We protect land to safeguard clean water, so we all have clean drinking water for local farms and food, so we, we all have uh, access to local food. Um, natural habitat and that this is a restoration site so that's part of that and then to connect people with nature and that's where the trails come in so everybody can get out and, and experience what we have out here absolutely that's it crazy. seems like there's so much to learn I, I saw um, your bluebird signs and then you, you were telling me about these these all these blackberries and the kind of like habitat that this supports and so there's whole ecosystems to observe in this in this area and that's just a really cool opportunity yeah, and Horton Grove actually has a, a number of different ecosystems. One reason I like it so much, um, you have a mature hardwood forest that you can walk through. Our trails go through that. This is one of our grassland restorations. Uh, so this type of habitat historically would have been much more common. Um, but as uh, people have moved in, as Europeans have moved in, mm -hmm. um, the sort of natural fire regime, um, some of which was uh, natural causes like lightning, um, but also the native peoples burned a good bit uh, and created this type of open habit habitat. Uh, lots of natural uh, grasses out here, native grasses, and it benefits a different type of species uh, than what you find in, in mature forests. So there are a lot of birds that need this open habitat. Um, they can hunt for insects, things like that. Lots of pollinators and grasshoppers and things out here which attract those birds as predators. Um, and so a lot of species are in decline that need this type of habitat. And so that's one thing we're trying to do is um, 
restore an area where some of these species in the climb can be and then teach people about it as they come and walk through it. So Vera, can you tell us who you are and what you do? Sure, so my name is Vera. Um, I am the manager for the historic site where we're standing right now, Stagville State Historic Site. Stagville is right next door to the Horton Grove Nature Preserve that y'all are visiting during this trip. So um, our the nature preserve and our historic site um, preserve related lands and lands that have very similar connected history. Um, and um, our historic site is right here next door to the preserve. Um, my job here is a public historian, which means that my job is not just to research and learn about the history of the people and the buildings that were here, but also to teach that history and to share these stories with as many people as possible. Cool. Yeah. That was awesome. So um, if you were to, to give us a little bit of a synopsis of some of the, the kind of realities that were that made this place what it is, um, what would you say? How would you share yeah. that? Yeah. So our site protects um, a tiny fragment of what used to be one of the largest plantations anywhere in the state of North Carolina and really probably one of the larger plantations in the United States. Um, so when we stand on this land today we're standing on one of the largest sites of slavery in all of North Carolina and today a place that is probably one of the better documented sites of slavery in mm -hmm. our area. Um, by 1860 the plantation around us here sprawled across about 50 square miles of land, including where we are now, but also all of the land of the nature preserve and many miles around us here. And by 1865, we believe that there were over 1,000 people who were held captive in bondage on this site. So our work today focuses on researching and teaching about the experience of the dozens of families who were forced to endure slavery here. And we focus on learning about their family lives, their cultures, their traditions, as well as the labor they were forced to do and um, the policies and decision making of the white families who owned and controlled this plantation. Mm -hmm. um, where we are right now, in particular, is on the grounds of Horton Grove. This is the site for which the nature preserve next door is named. And Horton Grove is the only surviving set of slave dwellings from these massive plantations. So these buildings behind us here in this row are the only surviving houses where we know that families lived here during slavery, mm -hmm. which makes these buildings probably the most important buildings that we protect in our site and really um, a remarkable place for us to visit today to be um, closer to understanding the history of what families experienced here. Thank you for sharing all that. Yeah. So Kayla, can you tell us who you are and what we're doing yeah. here? <laughs> I'm So I'm Kayla. I am the Community Outreach and Education Associate for TLC. I am actually an AmeriCorps member, which means that TLC is my host site and I'm doing my service term for a year here, um, which it's been a wonderful year thus far. And I'm really excited to be out here with you all today. Awesome. Yeah, it's beautiful. It is just an incredible spot right here. Oh, yes. This yeah. is one of my favorite spots. I know that Daquan earlier spoke about how Horton Grove is his favorite preserve, but I've been here a little bit longer, and I have to take claim that it's my favorite preserve. So <laughs> we can't share. <laughs> it's quickly growing to be my favorite preserve, too. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Um, but here in front of us, we actually have a really cool creek bed here. Um, it's actually been recently studied by a couple scientists through uh, the North Carolina Environmental Agency, and they have actually found a stone fly that they believe to be, which it's not confirmed yet, but believed to be um, a species that's only found in the Ozark Mountains, which are, is in Arkansas, Oklahoma area, which if it truly was this species, then that would expand its range by about 800 miles, which wow. is insane. So 
Um, they want to do a really cool study on this creek, and it's called a benthic study, which means that they're doing a base level or a lower level um, water layer study to see what kind of mac macroinvertebrates, so like large insects in the water, um, are, so that they can see whether or not this is actually a model system that could be um, a model for undisturbed creeks all over North Carolina. So, which means that it would be really clean and really awesome, doesn't have any pollution or nasty chemicals in it. So awesome. Right, that idea yeah. is kind of like trying to see what a creek would look like if right. it weren't being impacted by human beings or, exactly. or, or other industrial processes mm -hmm. or something. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. So so um, uh, what would you like to show us uh, about this, this, this space? I, I think you mentioned yeah. some macroinvertebrates, some cool insects that live in the water. Yeah, we're actually going to do a quick little demonstration to see if we can find anything cool in the water. Um, Daquan and I have brought some nets and buckets, so we're going to actually show you the best way to look under rocks and to cause as little disturbance as you possibly can when you are doing these kind of um, studies. And let's go ahead and get started. Let's All do right. it. All right. So today we're going to actually be looking for indicator species, which indicator species are organisms, so plants, animals, insects, fungus, anything that's living. Um, that will show us how healthy a system is. So their presence, so whether or not they're here, will tell us whether or not this wa these waters are polluted. The best way to look for indicator species is to have a net of some sort, it doesn't have to be a fancy net, and you put it down right in front of a rock that you're going to turn, and you're going to pick the rock up so that the flow of water is going into the net, so anything that's underneath the rock is gonna swim its way into your net, and then you've caught it really easily. So all you do is you swoop underneath when you roll the rock, turn it up, and put the rock back where you put, or where you found it because you don't want to disturb the creek in any way. And then you can look in your net and see if you found anything. Yeah, another good way to look for indicator species or any invertebrates or to kind of get, they, they like to hide places, right? So you, you see there's some leaf buildup and some sticks and, and other things. So you can just take your net and sort of wrestle around in there and then pull it out. Let's see. Oh, cool. I got one. So we found some really cool indicator species while we were fishing around with our nets. Um, so these are macroinvertebrates, so that means they're tiny little insects, but we can see them, so that means they're large enough, uh, large enough for us to see. Um, but a couple of the ones that we found, we found some crayfish, and we even found a dragonfly nymph, which is really cool. Those two show that there might be some pollution but it actually show, or it can show that there isn't any pollution at all. If we kept looking, we might be able to even find a stonefly larva, which that's the one that I was talking about before. They have found that in this creek. So stonefly larva really can't have any pollution in the water that they're sitting in. So that, that shows that this is really clean water. Now, when I say clean water, that does not mean that we can go drink this water. That just means that there's not any pollution that's like fertilizers or chemicals that humans have put into the water but we still, as humans, need to filter it even further so that we are safe to drink it. So yeah, we've seen some cool stuff today, haven't we? We have seen some cool stuff. I love hearing from Vera all the stuff, or all the historical background of um, Stackville. And I think Matt um, earlier, you know, talked about our four public benefits of, of uh, conservation, but I think this property in particular really illuminates, you know, some of them. So we. We saw the clean, clean water, right? We protect clean water, um, clean drinking water. And you know, who knows where that stream flows into? It could, you know, one day affect our drinking supply. Um, we've seen cultural sites that are not just protecting the land, but protecting the stories of the people and that, you know, connection to nature piece that's, that's in our mission. And um, Matt also talked about the restoration efforts that we're doing to protect natural habitats here, so. I, I think it's been just such a great trip. We're, we're glad you all were able to join us. And um, yeah, it, there are definitely ways that you can get involved with conservation at your, at, you know, your home. Um, one way is to, you know, just come out and celebrate and support the trails. Uh, we have 44 miles of hiking trails at Triangle Land Conservancy Preserves. Um, so get out and, and interact with them. Do you have any other ways? 
Yeah, definitely. We have volunteer groups with all of our different, all of the schools that we can um, interact with, and they'll come out and we can do cleanups, we can do um, trail maintenance, things like that, where it's even just something like a simple hour where everybody can pitch in and have as many hands in the dirt helping us all out. It, we have a pretty decently sized staff, but we can't do everything with the 20,000 plus acres that we do preserve, so we definitely need everybody's help. We also have a great program called Triangle Explorers. Um, that is something that you can do at home completely, or you can do it um, in your community. It doesn't have to be in your backyard, but all of the activities that are on the Triangle Explorers, you complete an activity, you earn a badge, and it's all free, but it's a great way to connect with nature in your backyard, on our preserves, or in your communities. Um, yeah. I think it's it's just cool to you know see the different ways that conservation can look and mm -hmm. um, see all, all of the different benefits that it can have for the public. So, yeah. thank you so much, Daquan, for showing us around the Horton Grove Nature Preserve. We really felt like we learned a lot today. Oh, great! Yeah, I'm sure. I, I'm really glad you you liked it. It's been incredible. This is such an amazing resource that y'all are providing for our community. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. And, you know, anyone who's tuning in, feel free to come out yourselves and, and experience the preserve. Absolutely. Is there is there anywhere people can get more information? Yeah, you can go to triangleland.org um, to, you know, look at all the work we do, maps of our nature preserves, and more information about volunteering and our Triangle Explorers program. That's awesome. Yeah. Cool. Well, I think we're going to get to talk to you in just a minute in the live Q&A. Yeah. So stay tuned for the live Q&A where we'll get to ask Daquan and probably Kayla too some really cool questions. Yeah, bring it on. Bring it on. <laughs> Looking forward to it. <laughs> Thank you. See, See you, you then.